Hey, Jeff. Hey, Eric. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? Doing well, thank you. You know, we're almost up to episode 250. And there's a few things that I can look back at through this whole run and be like very, very proud of, right? Okay. One is when you asked all of our listeners to go bother Cardo Got Wings Mm -hmm. and say, I heard. Yeah, I heard a rumor that you're 4'11", (laughs) 4'11". Not not necessarily true. Yeah, it's sort of like the Fox News approach where it's like, (laughs) You're asking a question even though you know the answer. Right. Or like you're, you're putting out an answer in the form of a question. And I just like Jeopardy. I just love how we have our disciples and they just, you know, do your bidding. Yes. So, so that's one thing I'm very proud of. Another one is that last week I said, hey, it'd be great if we had our version of Joe Budden Fitz. Mm-hmm. Fits the real. Mm-hmm. I said it could be F-I-T-S, T-H-E-R-E-A-L. It could be F-I-T-Z, the real, whatever. Yeah. Whatever you make of it, it is. And not only did someone claim Fitz the Real, F-I-T-S, mm-hmm. so someone also claimed F-I-T-Z, the real. But I like that our proudest moments yes. are when we weaponize our, right. which leads our me, followers and listeners. Which, which <laughs> leads me into um, plan number three. Okay. <laughs> which is... This um, is sick, by the way. Folks, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. We don't have a guest for, for... This is episode 247. We don't have a guest for, for episode 250. We also don't have guests for 248 or 249. But, but, but I guess that's but, neither here nor there. <laughs> it's, it's No, it's it's... 250 is is the number yeah okay oh, oh this is just like there's something about mary where it's, <laughs> it's like there's there's eight minute abs but seven minute abs seven right, is the magic minute number abs. Yeah, <laughs> six minute abs that's ridiculous that's ridiculous seven so, minute abs is the magic number two, two <laughs> sorry 250 250 yep. is, okay. is the number mm-hmm. and we want to get somebody who has who has not really told their story right we provide a platform we need someone who can like really blow everyone out of the water and of course of course Everybody wants Dan, our brother, Assad Khalid. So oh. here's what we're gonna do, <laughs> we're guys. We're gonna ask to get Assad. We need, we need all of you out there. Is he verbal yet? It doesn't matter. I think it's gonna. Oh, be... we're just gonna pry the words out of him. Yes, let's go. Let's teach him his first words. <laughs> that <laughs> maybe his first word could be fits the real. <laughs> <laughs> Assad Khalid, guys. I I don't know how we do this. Do you hit up Khalid? Mm-hmm. Do you hit up Assad Khalid? No, 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 you're asking people to put real thought into this. Oh. When it's just, you know, you just at whoever's <laughs> running Assad's account, the poor like intern or whatever, who has to carry him around and change his diapers or whatever. I want to find out who that person is. Wow. What a story. What a, a story. The person who has the, the password. Ass- no, no. Who Assad Khaled is. Oh. Jeff. Our podcast has been around longer than Assad Khaled has been here. Wow. Think about fact. that. Yeah. <laughs> So let's get Assad Khaled up here. I know everyone wants Dan up here, but 250. 250. Let's get Assad. What if we really like just messed with everyone and made Dan episode 249? At this point, he could be 248, right? Numbers don't matter. (laughs) I don't understand the importance of 250. You've put a a high premium on 250. Assad Khaled. The problem is you've built up expectations that we're going to have a huge guest for 250. Mm -hmm. There is a chance. That we have. That we might have Dan for 248 and 250. <laughs> it might just be Dan's podcast from now on. Who's on 249? I, I don't know. Ramon? <laughs> Assad? We're never going to get big guests anymore. No. Guys, episode 250 with Dan or Assad Khalid. Or the person behind Fits the Real or Fits the Real. <laughs> Could be anybody. Could be anybody. But today on the podcast, episode 247, we have Ramya Valuri. Shout out to Ramya. Ramya is somebody that we've known for a very long time. She was a student at NYU when we first met her. She's been in the business managing people like Goldlink and Ravy B and Amrit and Tommy Genesis. And she has interned for Funkmaster Flex and Carly Hustle and worked at Summer Jam and has been in the agency world and talks about her friendship with Action Bronson and ASAP Rocky and ASAP Ferg. But we haven't even talked about the fact that she's from Kentucky. And she's from Kentucky. (laughs) And this is a rock chalk Jayhawk house. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Strictly Kansas. Shout out to Peach. Yeah. This, it's, it's a crazy story. She is an Indian girl from just this tiny corner at like the the intersection of Kentucky and Ohio and West Virginia and how does that girl an only child how does I mean, she make it up here we're ma- we're getting really far into this episode we're basically like retelling the episode right now 
Are you saying we should get her back for episode 250? That is exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> we're That's running out of options. We're running out of time. <laughs> and we honestly have not. We, we've, we say we've put in a lot of thought. I don't know who we're going to have for you, 250. This is just like us, Jeff. We just complain. <laughs> we don't get anything done. No, I feel like we're, we're making very lofty goals. But isn't that the point? You want to celebrate. This is, guys, this I is feel the like opportunity here. No, what we're doing is we're dreaming big and then we're going to fall hard. Oh, Jeff, this is that, by the way, right there, that those two, those two visions, mm -hmm. Eric and Jeff, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that right there. Jeff, when do you want to get into it? Uh, right now. Yo, what up? It's Eric, a.k.a. Walmart Greeter, a.k.a. Getting High Off Your Own Supply. Yo, what up? It's Jeff, a.k.a. Waiting for the Breakdown, a.k.a. The Therapist. And I'm Ramya. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's your third favorite podcast to waste the time with. It's the real. Bow, 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 bow. Ramya, what's happening? Hi, guys. How hey, are you? Very good. Thanks for coming up here. Literally, I would only come here for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so... You don't go beyond like 50th Street. That's the cutoff. That's off. a reach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think 14th is a straw. Wow. Mm -hmm. Even you barely get into the numbers? <laughs> it just takes a really special kind of person to bring me up here. Wow. wow. Or two. <laughs> or yeah. two. Or two. <laughs> two. Yeah. Choose one. Who's the special? Who's <laughs> yeah. the more special brother? No, wait. Save it for the end of the podcast and <laughs> yeah. then people will wait I for decide. that. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. You're notorious for being on your phone all the time. Have you? Am I? Have you, you in, have you in the last at least five years gone, let's say, an hour and a half without being on your phone? You know what's crazy is that everyone like says this to me. They're like, you're all, every time I'm out, you're always on your phone. And even when I'm with clients, they'll be like, well, you're on your phone. I'm like, if I don't answer you, then it's a problem. So, <laughs> Is that what um, you say to like your parents or like relatives when you see them and you're on your phone? Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're <laughs> like, you're always on your phone, so how are you not responding to me? And I'm like, I'm... It's actually to a point though where I'm fine to just like put it down and if something happens, it'll either figure itself out or um, you know, you yeah. just get to it when or you sorry. Need to. Yeah. yeah, or like, you Why know. Why does this feel like cigarettes where it's like I can quit anytime I want, but it's like you definitely can't. Like uh, you're going through like six packs a day. Yeah, it's definitely difficult, but as I've kind of been on tour and traveling a lot more, it's just physically impossible to find Wi-Fi or service. So I do this thing where I respond to emails at night sometimes so that people have to wait 12 hours before like freaking out or like doing Sure, anything. yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I've actually, it, that's literally my phone going oh. off right now, but, uh, but I'm trying to make a conscious effort to just like put it down or put it away. And it might seem like I'm not good <laughs> when, when people see me, but slowly people are telling me like, okay, I've noticed you're like, it's away now. So. Are you the type to say to a person like, oh, no, I can hear you while I'm also typing? Yes, okay. I can definitely <laughs> multitask because like you're on a shoot and then you're also like answering emails. So it might not sound like I'm listening, but I can I can pretty much multitask. OK, so but. can I just move it just because it's like, oh, against yeah. the thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was like, wait, where is this phone? <laughs> no, sorry. Literally, it's like it's it's like a haunt, a phantom like yeah. <laughs> anxiety. Yeah, I was like, am I having a stroke? Like, what is <laughs> you have one of the most unique stories, I think, that we found in all of our time in New York City. Where are you originally from? Um, I'm originally from Ashland, Kentucky. Where is Woo! Ashland, Kentucky? Go Tigers. Yeah. <laughs> it is in the other tri-state area. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it between It's where Ohio, West Virginia, and Kentucky meet. Um, I always say it's like it, it's literally like in the butthole of America. Like it is, <laughs> um, well, you make it sound appealing. Though. I know, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's nice. It's lovely. It's I, an interesting place because it looks like it was archived in the 80s. Like It looks like a time capsule because basically Marathon Oil kind of put a lot of money, pumped a lot of money into that area, then it got bought and everybody left. So then it just looks like kind of a wasteland from the 80s. Damn. Um, so yeah, I grew up there my whole life. I'm not, I wasn't born there. Um, I was born in Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay, but and you don't claim Worcester. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, you don't have the Worcester accent. No. no, I only need to know so I know my moon and rising signs. Okay. So, <laughs> um, every time someone asks me, I'm like, yes, I know them all. I have, <laughs> my friends are all insane. Is there an Ashland accent? Um, it's country. Okay. And not Southern. Southern is the nice one. The sweet <laughs> one. Country is like, you. they're not putting sentences together. And it's like, and sometimes certain things that I say, it'll come out. Um, but it's country. Yeah. Yeah. So you, like the Appalachian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you dream in that country accent? No, I've actually tried <laughs> to make a very cautious effort to not, there's certain things I say, like, I'll, and if it depends on who, my, who I'm around. So I'll say like, 
are you fixing to go outside? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> who's that? Because <laughs> we like, had we had Jack Harlow on the podcast, and he is also from Kentucky, but he's from Louisville. Louisville. Yeah. As we learned to pronounce. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from an area worse than that. Okay. Um, not that Louisville's worse. Worse but, sister. Or worse sister. <laughs> but, but, but big cities in Kentucky uh, are Lexington, Louisville. 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 And then Louisville. how close is yours to a big city? N- none. Okay. <laughs> it isn't. Um, it's about 60,000 people. Wow. Um, actually, Charles Manson grew up in what is now a tennis court. It was a homeless shelter. Um, he grew up in my town. Um, also, the Cyruses are actually uh, like Miley and yeah. Billy. Uh, they're from my town. They, wow. Billy actually like he has a street named after him. His his like mother still lives there. But you started off there. with the, like an the killer. Avenue, Hold or? on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean that that's my claim to fame. <laughs> Charles Manson grew up. In my town. Yeah. Is that like where you guys hang out at the tennis court? <laughs> oh no, we hang out at Walmart. Oh, oh cool. Yeah. yeah. Where, do you, where did you guys hang out? We don't have a Walmart. We also <laughs> didn't have Charles Manson. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, when we were in first grade, I think they take you on a tour of the town, right? And, like, on a bus and everything. Yeah. And we didn't come from a big town either. But it was like Amelia Earhart once lived, you know, in Harrison. But yeah, you, so you she went, gets a plaque. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What she, does Charles Manson she get? She died mysteriously. Uh, your most famous person killed mysteriously. <laughs> yeah. And so, so you learn about that at a young age or something? Or? Yeah. There's, like, weird things about my town where there's a 60 Minutes documentary documentary about uh how how pain pills are trafficked from from florida because you to get a prescription there it's like kind of nothing and so um it's all trafficked through so like the addiction and the drug use is kind of intense and you don't realize that until you go to high school and you're realizing like okay there is a 15 year old pregnant there's my the kid sitting next to me is on heroin and you don't realize all these issues are going on because of it's not even like a racial issue because there was no people of color. Yeah. So it really becomes a distinction of class. And so who your parents are friends with and who, who what your social circles are, like that's a very Southern thing of like class. Sure. So um, you start to realize those, those distinctions very early on. What did you think when the MTV reality show about West Virginia came on? Or did you like not have any association with that? Uh. <laughs> It's so funny because uh, it was pretty accurate to a certain extent because like there's a lot of cool things that have happened in West Virginia. But I would say that area of West Virginia is very comparable to the Jersey Shore. Like they all look like that. (laughs) They're all like meathead, like wear Ed Hardy, Misty jeans. Like that's still a thing. So I think they got a uh, an idea of what West Virginia is. Certainly like that is accurate Mm -hmm. yeah and how did your parents end up in that part of Kentucky um so my my dad's a physician and so you'd be surprised at how many like Indian people are in like bumblefuck nowhere and it's because there's just like a lack of like medical care um because most most people want to live in a big city so it's just a lack of medical care and um and heart disease is a big my dad's cardiologist so heart disease is, is actually really really big in that area Go and figure. Yeah, so <laughs> a lot of business for him down there. Yeah, no reason yeah. to leave. So, yeah, so I, I live there for 19 years. And how many siblings do you have? I am an only child. An only child. The only one. <laughs> wow. And it is apparent every single day. <laughs> <laughs> every day it is apparent that I am the only child. Not great at sharing. <laughs> it's not even that. It's like my parents have nothing else to do. Like they have no other. Your father's like, a cardiologist. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's that. I think yeah. there's plenty. They yeah. have. Well, no, it's like they have no one else to like put their attention on. Like I have no brother or sister be like, see, like <laughs> you, they need more attention. Like you really need to to take them out or do whatever like I can't so as like or I'm getting more like cousins and stuff it's helping but I'm like I don't need all this attention yeah so who were your best friends growing up around there um it's crazy because I don't I don't, I don't really like talk to a lot of people that I grew up with um mostly because the mentality is is not where I am currently and so like I when as soon as I graduated high school so many of my friends got married or had children or like they just kind of like up and started hey this is what i'm doing and so um you know priorities are just different yeah and so when you applied to like nyu like was that like a big deal to a lot of people around you like oh you're going to new york yeah it was it was kind of like every all of my friends are going to like the university of kentucky and louisville Mm -hmm. and i thought about that 
And I was like, if I have to spend another four years with these crazy people, um, I'm just, it's just, I physically can't do it. So NYU was the first school that I got into. I didn't wait. I applied to like 15 schools and I thought that they were gonna take it back. So I was like, NYU just feels right. I don't know why. Um, but Had I was, you been to New York? I'd been to New York a couple of times. Um, I wouldn't say I spent a lot of time here and my my entry point to New York was like Times Square, Broadway. It was sure. everything that we hate. Yeah. So, uh, not that I well, hate speak Broadway. speak for yourself. Yeah, also, yeah. You know, I step off the bus and I just go, big lights, bright stars. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So, that's how I romanticized it. And so, um, I just felt like that was where I should be for anything. It's, yeah. I Did think you, everyone romanticizes New York. In of course. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Did you know anyone here? Did anyone from your high school class make that journey either? Or No. I had a cousin. Um that w- that that is here i think she's still here yeah <laughs> um but ages apart right. and um but no i was the only person from uh my school that went here i didn't really know anyone besides like my roommates um i would say there's one person that i still keep in touch with from high school but like he was kind of the same as me and so like he lived on tumblr i lived on the internet and we just kind of figured out like okay, we're both leaving at some point. Yeah. Um, so it was helpful to kind of like have at least one connection to home here and there. Um, but no, I, it took a while to, to adjust. Sure. Like it's completely different. Yeah. Do your parents still like it down there? Or is like a weird word? <laughs> like it's like that's, you know that's what? where they You know what, they weirdly do because what I will say about that area is that they're very kind people mm-hmm. and they're really sweet and like, they are as supportive as they can be so that's just like a southern mentality of like trying to find this balance of equality while it's also being a little racist so um so i think that's really it is like most of these people are pretty genuine and so it's they're not the way they are because of like stupidity it's just ignorance like they don't know any other way they don't know that what they say is not okay like they don't realize that what they say is racist or or not politically correct or like you know you're not exposed to it so i feel like there is a part of them that still like that area because it's not 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 because like like they get along with everyone it's really because like they're just sweet people and they're just they're just kind of ignorant Um, where did your family go like for vacations I will say we had some great vacations because we lived in the middle of nowhere. Like I went to, we went to Dubai. Whoa. Um, we'd go to like cool places because that's all you had. Yeah. Like so if wait, you're was, not doing anything. What, but it wasn't Dubai as Dubai is now. So what was Dubai like before like it became the Vegas of, or was it always the Vegas of? It was always developing. Like they yeah. always had a lot of real estate, a lot of developing uh like attractions yeah so i would say it was in the beginnings of that and then you went home where they have no skyscrapers (laughs) no (laughs) skyscrapers maybe two people of color (laughs) yeah was that like a weird thing or was it just like exciting to go to like dubai and you're just like oh my god and then you come home and you're just like well i don't even know how to explain this to anybody yeah they had like flying saucers (laughs) yeah i think it was definitely I had just bigger bigger ideas of the world than anybody else. Like I would travel, I went to Europe. Um, I went to Europe, I think like my ninth grade, in ninth grade on some school trip thing. Um, and I would go to Mexico with my Spanish class. And I, I did all of that as much as I could. Uh, Wait, it, so everybody was going on these trips? No, no, not everyone. But it would just, it would be a very small group of people. But mm-hmm. like, I would say ma- like max 20 people, mm. if that. But those some of those programs weren't, within my school itself it would be like those you know like programs like inter-school programs so like a like gifted a in talented yeah, yeah, sort of yeah, thing where yeah, it's just like, like you know that. like the best of yeah this school and that school or whatever mm-hmm. and yeah. yeah i used to be involved in this like volunteering program called uh key club hmm. and so that was like a huge thing so that's a very to, big southern thing yeah it's a very big southern thing by the way rick key ross club. Also, is in the key club. Different no. key club. Oh, <laughs> yeah, moving keys. Yeah, moving I got keys. so excited. I was like, because key club was like my Jack and Jill. All uh, my friends yeah. were like, I was in Jack and Jill. I'm yeah. like, I was in key club. Yeah. <laughs> What's the most Kentucky thing that people sort of associate when they hear you're from Kentucky, where they're like, oh, you must have done this or gone here? Obviously, Kentucky Fried Chicken, but that wasn't even invented oh, in Kentucky. Oh. No, yeah. Um, that's the obvious. Did you yeah. hear how like excited and then <laughs> unexcited? Right. As soon as I realized where it was going, I was like, oh, right, no. Oh. Uh, Growing up, you know, we talked about the things that made you different from everybody around you, but what's, what are some things that made you 
you know, fit in to um, Ashland, Kentucky? Well, so Indian people generally are pretty conservative, right? So I come from conservative households, and so I understood that. I understood, like, your skirt has to be a certain length, um, how to carry yourself in public, how to, those Southern ideals Mm -hmm. that uh, everyone adheres to, and especially in that area. So I think that's what was, like, the same, is being able to to know when is the right time to do and say something and and whatnot and i would get in trouble for for saying for talking shit and i wouldn't care because it just wasn't we got in trouble by like what your my parents? mom oh, yeah. yeah my mom would be like i heard you said this at like whatever the cracker we went barrel to. Yeah. yeah whatever we went to <laughs> and i was like yeah i did because i thought she was crazy I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I mean, technically, you did say I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry that I said it in that way. Yeah. But um, so I would say that's what made me most of the time fit in is understanding that like the 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 traditional aspects of what that area is about, and and any people are, are very conservative. When you left home, you left home behind, right? Like completely behind. No high I school friends. No like. Same here, and I grew up 30 minutes from here, right? And yesterday, uh, the locks asked us to go up to a thing that they were doing up at one of their Juices for Life stores up in the Bronx, right? So we go up there and we're just sort of like saying hi to people and seeing friends and whatnot. And Styles introduces us to his trainer and I turn around, he's like, this is Mike. And I turn around and I'm like, oh, <laughs> you went to Harrison High School? And he was just like, hey, and had no idea who I was, whatever, he was a year ahead of me. And then I just got pulled into a different conversation. And so then I'm stuck talking to this guy who <laughs> is older than me and also who like doesn't remember Eric. <laughs> and I'm just like, so like, what's your deal? But like, once I got back into that conversation, there yeah. was no sort of like um, connection there because mm-hmm. I wasn't able to be, I'm not friends with any of the kids who he like was on the wrestling team with or anything, you know? So I'm just like, uh, and even if it was, if you know, I was like, oh, you're friends with Jeff or Pete or whatever, he would have been like, cool. Like in high school I was. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not friends with them either. And that was, that was it. So there's no like real relationship there. I think you're sort of the the outlier in this in that you're still friends with most of your yeah. high school friends. A lot of my high school friends and I are still close. Well, yeah. I generally think that people of like minds will always find each other through some way. Like we always say how everything's so small, this industry's so small, but really it's just like people of like minds. So the one person that I do keep in touch with, we don't talk all the time, but it's like we have a similar headspace. So um, and we have the same interests. So I think, you know, there's we don't really miss a step. But everyone else, literally, children, babies, like marriage, yeah, yeah, like immediately, straight out the gate, yeah. So, what were your interests in high school? I was a thespian. Okay, okay. all right. So you did want to go to like Broadway? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did. I or were danced. you just like real dramatic, just in <laughs> general, like starting Both. fires and stuff? <laughs> Only um, child. <laughs> I I had the classic Hot Topic bangs. Wow. The band tees, the chucks. Um, Listening Those to Fall Out Boy. F- Blink-182. Wow. Um, Fall Out Boy, yes. I was that. So when Firefest came out <laughs> and Blink-182 is at the top of that, of yeah, that poster, bar, $20, was there any consideration? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Travis Barker is still like <laughs> one of my favorite rappers ever. He's a drummer, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but I just hold him to that level. Yeah, sure, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was pretty incredible. Uh, also, Fire. I think everybody who knew anything about anything knew that fire festival was a complete <laughs> nightmare yeah before yeah. it happened <laughs> before it yeah. even happened everyone looked at fire festival and was probably like this is going to be the best thing that has ever happened <laughs> to the internet it's so good yeah <laughs> like i i wish that there were like forty thousand more documentaries <laughs> about it i would watch every single one yeah. i live for the pettiness between hulu and netflix for dropping those so good, documentaries yeah. at the same time like that the the Theranos documentary. Oh, I haven't watched the it. The biggest yet. finesses of our lifetime are happening <laughs> in front of us. We are witnessing history. It's and amazing. This yeah. Is the best time ever. <laughs> in high school, you're a thespian. I was a thespian, and I was a dancer. I was a competitive tap dancer. So um, I did. I was the kid that did everything. Competitive so. tap dancing. Mm-hmm. Does that take you on the road? Yeah, yeah. I got some scholarships from it. Competed. Whoa. Um, I was. I also trained in ballet, so I, I did everything. What is it called when you stand on your toes? Point. Can you still point? Uh, it's dangerous for me to do it now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't. For taken... the haters? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Twirl on the moves. Yeah. 
Um, no, I. it's just a training thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people think that they can get back on it. And then when they do, it's like you can really like <laughs> yeah. you can really like fuck up your knees, your back, Damn. your feet. So do you still enjoy seeing the ballet? Yeah, I do. That's yeah, cool. I try to go see the Nutcracker um, every Christmas. And actually, I saw uh, this ballet that Jamie XX scored um, at the armory called Tree of Codes. And it looked it was amazing. It was cool. The lighting was really, really interesting and um, it was really dope. I was like, I like I wish more people knew about this and I wish there was some more integration within the traditional and more contemporary arts. So it was it was a great ballet. Is there any part of you that wishes that you were still dancing? I mean, I dance all the time. Haven't you seen me at well, last yeah, lap? Yeah, I don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it actually helps my mobility to know that I have danced. So anything else I do, um, if I work out, if I even standing on the train, like my daily life, uh, you, I can tell where my training has come in and out because like I know how to hold my posture and um, I can easily like pick things up. So because of choreography and like mental training in that way. So like you have to pick up choreography in 30 seconds. Yeah. I can remember most things even if I don't write it down or hmm. like it's just like mental training. I would say everyone should take ballet, honestly, because it's just like a lot of physical mental training that you would you can't really get anywhere else. Yeah. When you decided that you were going to move to New York and you're an only child and your parents are in the butthole of <laughs> wherever, what did they say? Oh my god! I my my parents still are like, are you sure you want to live in New York? <laughs> are you, you you're still good? Yeah. Okay, because I've never moved back home, and I think that was really important for me to to do is stay here or, or like just le not go back home. Um, there was no type of like resetting process. It was just never an option. Did so, they come with you? Uh, you know my my parents moved me in the first time, and then after that they were like, "Ooh, you live in a five story walk up." <laughs> Ooh, we have to take the train. <laughs> um, so they they come every once in a while, and my family loves New York, but um, like my my aunts, uncles, and stuff. But yeah, that, that <laughs> yep, that was it. <laughs> so when you went to New York, like, what did you want to do? Um, well, I thought I wanted to do international relations. And I guess I do that in so many ways now. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right, talking to your uh, British clients. Yeah. Right, yeah. Dealing uh, with passports. Wrapping the la yeah. international language. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought I wanted to do that. Um, but to be honest, I think I always wanted to follow my interests. So it was something in the creative space. I went to NYU and I went to Gallatin. Uh, and Gallatin is the School of Individualized Study. And, I'm, and you make up your major. <laughs> so what did I do? Um, I took every class that I wanted to take. I was like, ooh, a class on Diddy? Yes, please. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what was the class on Diddy like? It was pretty insane. Um, so Jason Jackson taught the class, and he was the former president of Bad Boy. But we'd have, like, Andre Harrell, like, graded our final presentations. And we had, um, like, Skype sessions with, like, Lorianne Gibson. And it's cool now because I'm, I'm actually working with Lorianne now. Oh, my God. And so it's just... It's cool because I'll see them out sometimes and they'll be like, hey, you were that that girl at NYU. And I'm like, that's great that you still associate me with that. <laughs> yeah. um, maybe I'm not doing the right thing. <laughs> um, but it's cool because for those reasons. So I think, um, so yeah, I took what I wanted to take, but ultimately I studied uh, the interdisciplinary relationship between fashion and music and how it affects global mass consumption. So long-winded way to say like sociology. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so that was basically it. I had every internship you could possibly imagine. I was always out. I was never in like I was never in school. Was that to sort of like gauge what you wanted to do as opposed to what you didn't want to do, or yeah, was that? Yeah, I think I just didn't know how to talk about the things that I liked, and so part of that is finding the vocabulary to define what it is you want to do mm -hmm. and how you want to do it. So I think it was important for me to figure out what I didn't want to do. Yeah. Um. So that took some trials and tribulations. So what what, what internships did you take? <clears throat> well, <laughs> um, I know I, one. <laughs> I know you were Funk Flex's intern. Yes, wow. I was. Wow. I've known you guys for so long that you <laughs> you remember that. <laughs> um, I was. So I thought I wanted to be a journalist. Um, I do not want to be a journalist. Okay. Um, not, not anymore. Not, not anymore. <laughs> you I, want to well, pivot to video. Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't know the entry points, right? So everyone told me like, oh, you should be someone's assistant. And I was like, Thank you for thinking so high. Like, not that <laughs> assistants are bad, but I was like, that is a great end goal. Um, or you should be a publicist or you should write or 
Like no one at that time, and this is 2010, no one knew how to define what anyone was doing. Um, and they still don't, but mm-hmm. I think there wasn't enough information. Well, anyway. you're either an influencer or a tastemaker, right? That's or, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or at that time, a blogger. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, <laughs> all right, let me do this. So I was interning at Guest of a Guest, and that was like my first internship. It was a good internship to figure out who's who in like nightlife and who's important, who's fake important, who, and who knows important people. Mm. So find those distinctions are surprisingly very vast, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very different from each other. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I just got to know people through that and you figure out like who, what, what people are doing and how they're able to do it. Um, and because of that Diddy class actually, and because of a, uh, a documentary called Never Say Never by uh, Justin Bieber, <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, I figured out that Diddy, Scooter Braun, Russell Simmons, like anyone who made anything of themselves in music. That they were um, important. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, anyone who just kind of built off of what they were doing and had transferable skills was a club promoter. Yeah. So, um, and that's, I say transferable skills because like one, you have to manage budgets, manage people, manage yourself. And um, just, it's it's just like a personality trait. What I didn't know how to do was kind of like social and social strategy. So I kind of got into a little bit of that as like Instagram is becoming significantly bigger and Tumblr is at its peak. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, I applied to an internship at Hot 97 first, and mm-hmm. I was interning with Carly Hustle. I'm pretty sure she hated me back then <laughs> um, because I was the annoying intern that just kept inserting my opinion when no one asked for it. Mm-hmm. And, um, only child, I was a, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only yeah, child, yeah. Um, and just kept like going into her office and be like, "Hey," <laughs> <laughs> um, and hopefully maybe she appreciates that too. Yeah. But I was a bad intern. Looking was, back now. Looking back at well, it. I was you, a, you wanted to be more than what you were. Yeah. I just wanted more responsibility. I was like, sure, I can put it, this in the spreadsheet, but like, I, yeah. you're never going to, you're not going to need this a year from now. I promise you. So <laughs> yeah, I wanted to figure that out. And then I kind of walked up to Flex when I met him and I was like, hey, my name's Ramya. Nice to meet you. And this is also like Pecan 97. Like I went to Summer Jam and I was like, oh, this is sick. How do I become a part of this? Or how do I like get to know, learn more about this? Um, so I applied a year later. I'm like working Summer Jam and doing socials. And um, so that's how I kind of like figured out that one, I hate social strategy. <laughs> I hate absolutely bore it um but yeah it got me to that level and then um i then i started working in the agency world when i realized like this the blogging world is kind of at, we're done with that now. so it's so easy back then to sort of like not be out there and not talk about social skills but like really be like in real life social yeah but like did you figure out the scene did you know what parts of town you wanted to go to where the parties were like where there were up and coming artists? Yeah, absolutely. I think, well, one, um, NYU brought Big Sean to uh, to perform. I don't. I think that was the last show they were able, <laughs> not able to do was BSU because he was smoking weed in a, in, on campus. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said before, like minds attract. And so you figured out what people were doing just based on like, like the trickle down system of, hey, I'm doing this thing, let everybody know. And the network is so is so massive. It's like a giant group chat. So we'd go to Santos Party House. I'd go to Webster Hall. This is also when you'd see everyone kind of roaming through the streets, coming onto campus. I used to swipe Rocky into Weinstein for Chick Fil A and Asher Bronson. <laughs> oh, like, and that's right. And that's the one Chick Fil A that was in New York downtown. That time. Yeah, yeah, because everybody and was going downtown. You were the connect. <laughs> and I, I had the meal passes. So um, yeah, all of them. Berg, I remember, yeah, we would go into Chick-fil-A and... I wonder if they would remember that. Rocky might, but um, I don't think he would remember me now just because it's been so much time. But, yeah. uh, but I, I'm still close with, like, Ferg and I are still cool. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Can you text Ferg right now and ask him if he wants anything from Chick-fil-A? <laughs> <laughs> I got a few swipes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, my workout earlier was with Ronel. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. yeah. Um, did you feel like you were part of the scene instantly or did you feel you still had to find your place? No, and I don't think I'll ever feel like I'm a part of it because I'm not from here. And also, I'm Indian, so there's certain things that like I'll never fully able to relate to, and that's totally okay. I always say that Indian people are like the biggest consumers of hip hop on the planet. Like, I don't know if there's an actual statistic out there, but I will make one up because it's that <laughs> big. Mm-hmm. And so I always say if Drake ever went to India, that would probably be the biggest show of their of life. Wow. So um, I really think that it's a it's an interesting entry point for me so um, how often do you go to india not often um my i'm not like i'm indian but i'm not from there either so 
I try to go every co- every five years. Mm-hmm. And I, that sounds like a lot of time past, but it does take a while to get there. And if I go, I have to see every family. And I still have family that live in li- villages mm. and drink from a well. Like you have to go through the depths of yeah, yeah. Uh, Narnia to get there. So kind of do it all in one go. So you feel like an outsider at that point. Where do you sort of go to progress your career then? I think I had to feel or or do something that felt a little bit more authentic to me. And so I wanted to bring value to whatever I did and have some type of understanding of how to how to be helpful in this business from multiple angles. So sure, I knew social, but sure, I knew the branding world. It was great that I knew the PR side because you know how to write a press release or you know how to talk to people or you know how to properly manage something. And so. Um, And I always say this, that like management is a personality type, but I've always had that personality type. Even when back then I was like, I was actually like managing some, some, some people that we know now, um, I was managing them and I had no idea what the hell I was doing. Uh, And I still, did they know that? Oh, (laughs) they had to have, I was literally 19 years old, fresh from Kentucky. There's no way I knew shit. So, um, but it was, it was cool to, to kind of be in, in the depths of it all. And so. There's so many projects and ideas that I was there for and part of that we kind of kind of see now. And I'm like, oh, I remember when we did that. And so I'll we'll it's cool to horizontally network. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're working with all these people that hopefully one day you take your head out of the clouds and you look around. and You're like, hey, we really did that. I think it's so dope, too, that you came at it from different angles because we get that all the time. What box would you put yourself in or how do you like refer to yourselves? And it's it's a difficult thing if you have lots of different ways to sort of do something or you have lots of different ways to bring value. So did you feel like you had to like say, I am a blogger, I am a manager, I am a PR person, I am something that people will understand? Oh, absolutely. And I still find difficulty in saying that. So I think manager as a title, was the easiest for me. Um, and I think it it is fitting, it makes sense. But I feel like that need for a title comes from an agency world. It comes from like, well, what's your title? What's your, who am I talking to? A senior person or a junior person? I need to know. So, and for what it's worth, half half the best ideas really come from the interns, from from anyone who just has a fresh perspective on it. So is that a sub? I know at, at Carly, Carly Hustle. Hustle? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't even realize. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but it's true. It is true. And like you know, sometimes you think you know it all. And I'm the first to say like, okay, I need new eyes on this. I've looked at this for so long. Like, what what am I missing? So well, I guess here's the real like question. Like, what do yeah. you put down in your tax form? Is it manager? <laughs> like, <laughs> it is, it is. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> it is, um, it's manager. And I think I'll always be a manager. Yeah, well, who could you look up to for advice while you were in college? Like who was really there for you to sort of bounce ideas off of and like be an OG? Uh, I would say Harry B. He owns a, uh, I'm sure everyone knows him at some, at some point, someone has met this man. <laughs> I, I, I swear by that. Um, so he owns an ad agency called Annex 88, formerly just the 88. And, um, he, he was, th- he was there to develop what we know as Instagram influencers now. Like he kind of started on that very early on. So it's his like, fault. Yes. It is his what, fault. What, Firefest? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but since then, uh, he's, he's put so many artists on between, he's worked really closely with Rocky to get him from, from what he was already doing at Santos Party House and bringing it to bigger brands and bigger, bigger strategies around it. So I would say, like there needs to be a whole like roundtable discussion about Harry because he's really like Heron had his first internship with Harry and um, so many like so many people have been given a platform because of Harry and so I don't think people realize it but I would say I would look up to he he would be that person where I'm like I have no idea what's happening can you help me <laughs> and you met him through just like going out and oh you know how I met him I met him and I've said this a couple times too I met him at a French Montana concert at. SOBs. What a dream. I know. Yeah. It was it was poetic. <laughs> I just kept seeing him and I was like, who is this Jufro man hanging with all my favorite rappers? <laughs> and he was just there in the crowd, like having the best time to French Montana. And I walked up to him and I was like, I, I was covering it for Flex at the time. And I was like, I don't know what it is that you do, but I see you everywhere. And 
I would like to know. <laughs> um, he gave me his card and I got an internship like the, the day after I met him. So. And what and was the difference between there. the internship for Carly or for Flex or for anyone at Hot 97 and interning for Harry? I think it was the difference between traditional and and uh, more new format media. It was, and, and, I, and I mean that in terms of mentality, actual platforms, completely different. The mentality is completely different. So everything with Harry was like disruptive. What's, what can we do to be disruptive? And with traditional media, it's more, what can we do to say we're disruptive, but actually appeal to the people that give us the money? So, um, and that's no shots to, to traditional yeah, media, yeah, yeah. but that is the reality. Yeah. So, and I come from, like, I'm, radio appeals to middle America. So mm -hmm. that's where I come To from. Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the butthole of, yeah. Yeah. of America. <laughs> were there any internships that weren't in this industry? There was one. I thought I wanted to be in fashion. And I worked with, like, Swarovski on, like, Okator. Um, and this was when I first moved to New York. I had no idea what was going on. So um, that was about it. The only thing that wasn't anything. Like, I was literally sewing crystals onto corsets if you look back at ramya freshman year what were you dressing like oh my god <laughs> i've tried very hard to hide those photos <laughs> and they i know they exist somewhere <laughs> it was like hot topic threw up on me it was bad <laughs> it was really dark and it went to swarovski <laughs> it was really dark because i still had like the bangs and then it was when fishnet tights were still a thing mm -hmm. and have they gone away is that, is that not a I thing i think anymore? they have a place uh -huh. they have a yeah, sure. yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was like making my own clothes kind of or like having alterations to it. So I remember a vest that I put feathers on and I you could not tell me shit. So I was, you thought you were like killing it. Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. I was really killing it. And you pulled up to like French Montana set it like SOBs in that. Like Oh yeah. <laughs> and I, I literally spent hours sewing feathers to my vest. Oh my god. Wow. How do you even care for that though? Like you can't wash it. Oh no. It's just <laughs> like it's, it's a one wear. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It is immortalized. It's yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now hold on, Ramya. Because <laughs> Ramya is definitely here, right here, right now. But just sitting so patiently while we do this live read. Live while Ramya's here. <laughs> um, give Ramya the opportunity to, to do something while you talk. Here, Ramya, why don't you go uh, organize our mugs, the mugs that we're going to go send out <laughs> when people order them on itstherealcom slash shop. I think that's a great idea. Ramya, while you're over there. Ramya, while you're over there. Mm-hmm. Can you please grab us one of those great It's The Real AKA t-shirts? Yeah, I wonder if people are going to think I'm rude because I didn't say please, Ramya. Oh. Yeah, please, Ramya. <laughs> Can you organize the mugs? We appreciate you, Ramya. There you go. For being here mm -hmm. while we do this live read. It's thereal.com slash shop is where you go to get your It's The Real merch. It's very helpful to keep this pirate ship afloat. By the way, when you get one of these amazing shirts and amazing mugs, you get an amazing handwritten note from yeah. us. They're not just regular handwritten notes. They are amazing handwritten notes. Ramya, not... do, do you want to sign one too? What's that? Oh, she doesn't want to talk during the segment, Jeff. Ramya is not going to sign it. <laughs> oh, Ramya, you can talk now. You know, you dip your toe into fashion. You're in hip hop. What's going on at NYU? Great question. <laughs> I wasn't really there. Um, so there, there was this point where I needed to understand or figure out if I wanted to do the college thing, meaning college, college, yeah. pay, pay tuition, yeah, um, yeah. And swipe I was going the to class. classes. Yeah. I was definitely going to class, and like I was doing well in school, and I actually learned the most from the classes I struggled in. Uh, so I took a lot of like film and TV classes, classes a lot about like hegemonic power and. Um, and I think that was really important for, I still think in that way. Um, and I think it was really helpful for me for that purpose. But as far as like a social life goes, dorm parties at NYU are not it. Um, frats at NYU, probably worse than. <laughs> yeah, because nobody <laughs> joins a frat when it. you're in a city. Like I went to BU and it yeah. was like the dregs of people who would just <laughs> join frats because their parents told them to. Right, and it's like a heritage thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is there is no way anyone who went to an NYU frat, like I would hope no one would recommend that. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, or frater or sorority. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't a thing, and I think there were there there were like maybe apartment parties. I don't know. There was just it was difficult to to, to navigate. Um, did you have a fake ID? I did have a fake ID. What was your name? 
it was actually my aunt's ID that she gave to me. Wow. Wow. So, wow. <laughs> and luckily, like Indian people don't age and we all look alike. Mm -hmm. So she was, her ID was 30 um, and I was 18. Yeah. And no one, no one questioned it. Really? Not one person? Not one person. You were, I, you were still, I, you had it, the bangs? It's you never, swipes. you never think back and be like, oh, like people were really lenient, like when they saw my ID. Oh, they had to yeah, have been. <laughs> oh, they had to have been. Because even though like your face might not have aged, like you're still dressing like, the way you were like feather vest, all that stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just oh, also yeah. love too that you're like you're 30, but you're going to a French concert. You're going to like you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> things with all these other 21 year olds. I'll still be doing that at 40. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. So I had a fake ID, so that really helped. Um, again, like navigate what is the difference between NYU social life and just being in New York. So I actually just chose if I'm going to live in this city, why isolate myself and have a f and fake start my life. Let me just start it. Wow. So for about two years at NYU, I tried to figure NYU out itself. I was like, oh, this is cool. Like I'm friends with these people, but I knew that I was never going to stay friends with them because yeah. the only thing that kept us together was class or being on the same floor. Yeah. So I have about five really good friends from school that I still like, they're really, I'm really, really good friends with. Rocky, for <laughs> Renell, yeah. Action, Action Bronson, and, uh, yeah. and one more. Yeah, and yeah, Raven, yeah. I was actually in school when I met Raven. Whoa. Yeah. And um, so I met you guys when I was in school. Yeah, yeah which is yeah. crazy, because I, I thought I was meeting a 30-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought I, I was just getting Chick-fil-A. I don't know, you know. I met you guys in literally like 2012 or something. That's wild. Yeah. What did your parents think when you told them, not just you're going to New York, but I'm going to design my own major. It's going to be like whatever I can dream up. <laughs> and I'm going to sort of like kind of take class but also just find my way so i didn't really tell them that much information <laughs> are they just finding it out right yeah. now <laughs> um i think so at a traditional school you have all these requirements for so many years that you don't really have time to think about what your major is until your junior and senior year so i just kind of told them i was like yeah i'm just doing like CAS, which is like the school of pretty much it's arts yeah, and college sciences. of arts sciences. Yeah. Right. So everyone has a CAS. Yeah. So yeah. from that point, my parents were like, "Okay, cool. Like she's doing what everybody else is doing that that we that we know of." So my parents, they like assumed I was pre med. It's racist. <laughs> 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 they were just like you're pre like they like really thought that I was pre med, and I was like the only science class that I've taken since high school was history of the universe. <laughs> wow. So I have really not big picture this. stuff. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I mean, <laughs> so uh, I was like, uh, sorry to break it to you guys, but yeah. this is, there's no way this is happening. When you would go home, did you feel like there was like a ruse or were you just like, that you weren't just asking the right questions and so therefore it's their fault? I was vague. I was purposefully <laughs> very vague because I'm also figuring out, figuring everything out too. Mm -hmm. I just knew that I wasn't going to be the, to do the traditional thing that they thought that I was going to do. So I wasn't pre-law, I wasn't pre-med, I wasn't pre-anything. I was literally pre-Diddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I think that took them a little bit of time. They still like are trying to understand and trying to yeah. learn it. And I think this is something across the board that I have difficulty explaining to anyone. I don't think this is something that anybody can understand. Like I barely can comprehend it. So there's definitely still a learning curve. <laughs> I'm sure you met a lot of people who you like became close to like within the scene, but certainly friends of the room, Raven and David Amaya, or oh, yes. just Amaya, <laughs> um, became very close and you guys are still friends to this day, but what, what was it like meeting them and what appealed to you about them? Again, horizontal networking, highly recommend anyone, like I get so many questions all the time. I'm like horizontal network, I'm telling you it'll be the best thing that you ever do. Cause that's what we do all the time, right? Like we're constantly trying to work with people who, who we can expand on and grow with. Yeah. And so that's where we were at our time. Amaya was, half getting arrested by the feds. Raven, <laughs> oh, for, for MP3 blogging. Yeah, not for, for like, you know, uh, trafficking. Yeah, for not so, trafficking yeah, I was coke. Like, but... I was like, he looks like Escobar just on <laughs> yeah. Halloween. Not like, He's you know. trafficking pills through your hometown, you know? Yeah. So. Oh, David. Like, like he was doing socials for Def Jam. So if I was at, I, I used to work the doors at a lot of parties. So like any good music event or I worked it up and down and stuff like that. So I'd send him photos of Kanye for the Def Jam Instagram. And like, we just built that like, friendship that way or uh, and uh and si similarly with raven she was like actually taking the photos and and that's how that's how we all became friends because we were going to these things and um and getting into these events and we would i would sneak 
them into parties and vice versa and we would pass bands back and that's <laughs> that's how we got to know everyone yeah and got to know people and got to be in the same space like we had the same playing ground as everybody else we just it was harder for us yeah. to get in uh so yeah we we met um 2013 we met years ago and so that's just how, how we maintain that relationship but i met them both while i was still in college and I was like working on like a digital magazine at the time. Um, like it was like basically, a, it was like a fun project. And so we interviewed Raven, or my, my partner interviewed Raven at the time. So Raven was like, hey, I, like, I just did this for you guys. And I was like, yeah, I'm excited to see it. And if you probably Google it, it might still be there. Oh my God. Um, so that's how we got to know each other. And then we just kept seeing each other. So if one of you got into a party, all of you got in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if one of you didn't get into the party, well, I <laughs> well, <laughs> no one ever wanted to be that friend to, to be the downer, but right. for the most part, we we like really helped each other out. Yeah, so, that's dope. Yeah. Are you sort of moving with artists at that point? So still at that time, I have no idea what I'm doing. And I don't know, everyone kept telling me to be a publicist. And I was like, take that idea and shove it up your ass because <laughs> I don't want to be a publicist. Not, not to say anything against that, but I was like, why do I have to be one thing? Like, why do I have to do one thing? And um, so I was doing the door up and down. And again, same thing. I was like starting to solely book parties. Um, so if an artist was in town, I'd reach out and I'd be like, hey, I want to book you at this thing or that thing. And so I was kind of promoting, but um, but that's that's how I started to get to know artists directly is I would reach out really early on and this is how, this is so far how it's happened to, to date in my career is if I really like like an artist or like an idea, I'll just go to it directly or however direct I can get to it and be, be like, hey, I have this idea. If you're into it, like, let's figure it out. Um, and so it's all relationship building and I think that's so important. So that's how it started. Did you know anything about money, like in terms of like how much a guarantee was or how much like you should give them from the door or anything or? No. And and that's always something that like you're going to fuck up many times <laughs> until you do figure it out. So there's plenty of parties where like I lost so much money or just had to like learn better next time. And it. Yeah, that, that was just through experience. And be like, okay, next time I definitely won't do it this way. So, <laughs> And yeah. we all know Up and Down's been popping for a long time, but what yeah. were some of the other spots that you would go to that were really like your places? West Way. Mm. The former strip club. The former strip club. Yeah. Deep so on the memories. West Side. Yeah. yeah. So many memories at West Way. I still think that if West Way were to ever do like a pop-up event, it would probably be like the party of the year mm. um, because so many people have like such fond memories at West Way. Mm -hmm. I was on um, stage with 3-6 Mafia. Oh yeah. yeah, I remember like- For a Supreme show or something. The yeah. Project Pat uh, show there was really, really sick. I remember Post Malone's first show there. Um, Shabazz and I did Gold Link's first show there. Wow. So even Migos did- Yeah, did I was yeah. afraid yeah, yeah. West Way. Like yeah. that, mm -hmm. was, that was major. So I think there's just such good moments there. How were you at the door? Here's the thing. <laughs> uh -oh. I it's so funny because again, I, when you're at working a door, everyone is like thinks they're important, right? Correct. Which is which I get. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Everyone wants to get in, and no and one wants are, to stand on the line. That yeah, they're supposed no one to actually stand wants in. to stand. But on most the line. importantly, nobody wants to be seen getting rejected. <laughs> oh yeah. So there's like that ego thing where it's just like, yo, right? Like, and the reality is that line is a complete fallacy. Like <laughs> that is like there is no such thing as a line. It's right. not real. Right. Whoa. So it's the line true. is a metaphor. Yeah. The line is a metaphor. <laughs> there's it's a line true. in all of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So like, and there's always a way to like figure out space, unless it's like at a show and there's actual capacity issues. But you know what I mean? Like, wait, are you really club? like deconstructing the entire <laughs> uh, nightlife industry right now? You're like, hey, is, there's always room for you. Yeah, yeah. let me give yeah. you the real secret. No one had the guts to say it until always, Rami right there's now. There's always room. So yeah, there's it's actually sort of like a socialist idea. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> is that not nightlife? <laughs> 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 I, I mean, you can look around and real, yeah. <laughs> realize this is all socialist. Uh, so yeah, I think obviously if I knew someone or if um, it's all it's all part of the game. Yeah, it's sure. All chess. Yeah. Sometimes no one's gonna be inside, and the line is like forever because yeah. you wanted to make it look more popping on you know. Yeah, yeah. it's on all its, space. it's all fake. Did you have to be mean to people online? I don't know if I was ever mean, and I think I've definitely become nicer over the years. Mm -hmm. But I, ha well, I forever have a resting bitch face, and that's something that I will never 
be able to fix. But I was never outwardly mean, but I would just be like, if you want to wait, I can get you in in like probably 20 minutes. So that's on you. I have <laughs> so, never heard that from people at the doors. I've only gotten like either just like, know? yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's not on the last. <laughs> is my favorite. So, so you didn't want to do that forever, though. You didn't want to be working like a door or doing publicity or dealing with oh people God, like no. that ever. No, honestly, dealing with talent is hard enough it, as it is. <laughs> like dealing with people that think their talent is like a whole other. Right, yeah. right. This is a city full of them. Well, yeah. Yeah, that, that, yeah. Who are the first clients that you pick up? So I think they picked me up. <laughs> oh, it's I like a me cute. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> or like, or like, or, or Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. It was definitely mutual. Like n at no point was, um, has anything ever been forced? So I would say my first like real, like, hey, okay, this is the first step into doing what I want to do, um, was Gold Link. So I heard the song on Hype Track, Rest in Peace, and um, it was called Planet Paradise. It's not out because the sample will never get approved, <laughs> but um, it was incredible. It was one of, I heard it instantly and I was like, "What? who is this? And I just like reached out. I'm pretty sure like I followed him on Twitter. I think he followed me right back and it was just instant. I don't think we like, we haven't lost touch since, basically. Did you know he was from the DMV? I knew very little information and I did not know what he looked like. So when he came to the, when we did his first show, I didn't know which one was which. <laughs> did you I introduce like, yourself to the wrong person? <laughs> I just, I, I, well, one, one of his friends, um, or that was there that day was talking to me as if he was him. And I was like, something <laughs> tells me like, this is not him. And he was like, you think I'm gold link, don't you? And I was like, I was like, I, if you told me that you were, yeah. I would have to believe it. But I don't think you are. And right. I was like, yeah. I was like, okay. You were like, good bit. Thanks yeah, for yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, thank Just you for... Just introduced me to Goldling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so it was around that. It was a couple, maybe a year or two after that, the buzz is starting to get a little bit bigger. And when they come to New York, they hit me up. Or if they need anything, I was just kind of that, that person. And so it was around this time... Uh, Dan is actually doing like free press for Gold Link. And so that's how Dan I meet Friedman. Dan. Shout out to Dan. And I was writing for Brick Magazine. So I knew Dan because he was a, pub he was a publicist. Yes, yeah. correct. So the I job was, you didn't want to do. The job yeah. I did not want. And um, I would write for some of his clients. So I did this piece on McConan. Um, I did, I interviewed Father for something. Um, I did a lot of pieces in Brick. And so that's how I kind of got to know Dan. Then he started to do PR for Gold Link. And um, and that's when Derek Aro mm -hmm. is also in like all of this is happening at the same time. So Dan and Henny form this like management company and there's some like outlier people. And at some point I'm still doing social strategy. Absolutely abysmal. And um, <laughs> well, you followed Gold Link. He followed you back. Sounds, yeah. it sounds like great. So, there's the social strategy. Yeah. So there's the strategy. <laughs> I started working with them like here and there, I was still working like my normal job. And then at some point I just kind of, it just started to grow from there. So we started working with more artists and just growing it and developing it. And then it was just this ongoing machine that we just didn't Couldn't get rid stop. of each other. Well, yeah. most, I mean, like, but you're going from, your, you met Gold Link and you, you book like one show for him, right? But then it becomes yeah. like a relationship. And so how does it go from just one to like, because there is a conversation within that. Oh, right? yeah. Trust and all that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, there was never like a conversation of, of like, do you want to do this or do you not want to do this? There was, was no like Laverne and Shirley, or I'm um, not Laverne and Shirley, Philem and Louise. <laughs> Very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> do you want to hop skip through Milwaukee yeah, or yeah. do you want to drive off a cliff? Right. So there was no like, you know, holding hands like off into the sunset sort of no, thing. No, it was, it was just like natural. Like we never had to have a conversation about anything. It was, ne it was never a question of if I was in the picture or not. Cause if, if there was anything to like, to ask in nightlife for brand or the brand world or this idea or that it would like I'd be a, I'd be one of the first calls or for not just him for for Henny for Dan for just like these group of people that we figured out okay we can work together let's slowly figure this out and then it just became like a company so by this point you're out of college Yes, and I'm you're about living a year in New York City. Out of college. And you had graduated. And I had graduated. Congratulations. Yes. 
Lo- international yeah. relations. Yeah. Inter- yeah. yeah. <laughs> pre-med. <laughs> <laughs> pre-med. <laughs> I'm still pre-med. <laughs> and where, where were you living at the time? Um, I, oh my God, I was living on St. Mark's. Wow, uh, right in the thick of it. Yeah. Which is the karaoke district. Yeah, yeah. For, for <laughs> Did you karaoke for every New night? York? <laughs> um, absolutely not. Oh, I, they're going to be like, define every night. Yeah, yeah, yeah define yeah, every yeah, night. Yeah. Define karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> Um, By the way, I saw a clip of you the other night doing karaoke. Actually, I saw about five clips. And <laughs> you you were directing your gaze to the camera. You were like way in it. Oh, and every, star? Every, every, everything killed. I'm a thespian. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so what do you perform at karaoke? Craig David. Yeah. Perfect. Film me. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, 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 every time. Yeah, yeah. That is my song. When you're not singing, next time you go to karaoke, can you do tap dancing in front of oh the screen? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Like even like just to like steal the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the camera's not on. We you. should do it to like American Pie or something that's like yeah. very long, like eleven <laughs> minutes. <laughs> so you're living in St. Mark's. Five story walk up. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. There was it was basically a fraternity. Like there was literally <laughs> drunk. Guys. You said not to join the frats, and here you and are. Here I am yeah. on the fraternity of life. <laughs> mm-hmm. Tap dancing your way through. Yeah. Wait, and how many five story walk up apartments have you had? Actually, only only one. Oh, okay. two, two, two. Okay. I've had two. I've had two five like walk ups. Jeez. Yeah. And but, then, would you describe? Because we have a friend who lived on the sixth floor walk up, and he was like, "It's one flight too much." Yep. <laughs> so five is like fine. Five, five is just right. Five is the magic number of what is tolerable. Oh my god. Even though, like, okay, so it's like you know, eleven o'clock at night. And you're like, oh, I'm hungry. I have to go downstairs, and then come upstairs five flights. I and- would rather starve. <laughs> <laughs> It's like every small errand just like, do I really want this? Right. Do I really want to go like get Chinese food? Do and the I answer, really want to go see friends? It's like, no. 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 You know what's crazy is I was still living there when Hurricane Sandy hit. And that's Oh, when so you were in the safe ground. I was in the... No, no, no. I was in... I was in I Am Legend. Yeah. <laughs> it's when the Transformer blew out and oh. the bottom half of Manhattan was completely dark. Yeah. So we're walking home with lanterns, literally lanterns. <laughs> And uh, the only place to get any type of Wi-Fi or anything was the Kimmel Center and at, at NYU. At NYU, at NYU yeah. Sorry, NYU. We'd have to walk there to get Wi-Fi, but no cell service. And like the president of NYU, Jonathan Sexton, would like walk around and like give hugs to people. And Alec Baldwin was was there with him, like sure. trying to like give hope. And I'm like, we just don't have cell service. If you got, go up to 30th Street, like everybody is fine. Like oh. no one, this isn't post-apocalyptic. Yeah. Well, let me tell you from the people who live Uptown's perspective. <laughs> it was fine. Our, yeah, it was great. It was great up here, <laughs> yeah. but it was be, uh, we would have friends who would travel up like the, the, the hordes of the unwashed or whatever. Yeah, and they would like be, crash on our couch. No, but they would be camped out at like ATMs with their phones plugged in because it was just like, how do I survive yeah. without cell phone service? By the way, I love that that picture of what that is. Like, if you explain that back to your parents again in the butthole of America, and you're just, they're like, "What what was it like up there during the storm?" You're like, "I mean, Alec Baldwin was walking around, and um, yeah, <laughs> it sounds glamorous. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I got a hug. Yeah, yeah from the I, got a, I got some hugs. We got some. Oh, we got some president. hope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that was the crazy part through all of it. Is like we're all camped out and we have no heat or electricity. We had to fill the t- before the pipes shut off. We had to fill the, the tub, tub up with yeah. clean water. So all these survival <laughs> yeah <laughs> right survive. Um, so so our drinking water was from this tub that oh we had God. for a week. So had you clean the tub beforehand. Yes. Oh yeah. Because okay. <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm like then no, no, it's, no. It's, it's pointless. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, we had to definitely clean the tub. Before. So regardless of all that perilous you know scenario there, did you feel like you really like own New York? You felt like you were a New Yorker. You were part of it. And you know, if someone if Golden came to town, you knew where the cool spots were. Yeah, yeah. You knew where the good spots to eat were. Oh yeah, the absolutely. good places to karaoke. All of that. And that has changed significantly over time. But yeah, I think by then, by four years, I've been here. I can navigate. New York a little bit better but it's still as much as things change though like the go-to spots are I, f- I feel like are still like okay we still go to the spot like up and down yeah, yeah. just on a yeah. casual or even like happy ending like that was that was a thing but at that point though when do you start to travel with an artist like when is the first time that you went out of town uh I went to London with Gold Link for his first like European tour run basically um and i was there for like press days and things like that so that was like the first time 
uh, I'd really like gone to London and had to to be a part of this entire journey. Was that a lot? Um, it was okay because the volumes are so small, right? Like you're still introducing this person to the world. The venues are small. The the con like everything about it is still so like precious, and everyone that's a part of it wants to be there because they like genuinely believe in it and they love it. So. It wasn't super intense. It wasn't crazy. It, I, everyone that I've met since then, I still work with now, I, and I talk to them now. So, um, so I think that was that was like the best part of it. What was the biggest deal within that like week or whatever that you were over there? Was it going to do like press? Was it, it was the show? He has a show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was there for show. Um, uh, I think it was his first headlining, like London show. Um, the venue was like super packed and could they sit more out. because like nightlife is an illusion <laughs> <laughs> or like doors are an illusion yeah, yeah door capacity is an illusion <laughs> yeah so like really like Wait, oh I snuck hella people in even now when I'm told like when the promoter hopefully no promoter listens to this but yeah. even now when a promoter's like alright your list is capped I'm like bet and I still <laughs> sneak people in oh good like it's my show and yeah. I'm still sneaking people in you know in. old you would have hated new you <laughs> <laughs> So, so you, what did you learn from that trip, like as a as a manager? Well, this is also the beginning of what like Skepta's career is, and this transition of UK hip hop into what is becoming like this global sound. Um, so that's the early ages of that, and you're seeing how U.S. artists are ado are adopting these ideas and this lifestyle from the UK and these artists and these people and you start to realize that the differences aren't that aren't that vast like there's a lot of similarities here and a lot of similar content and the way they think about things and um, so that's what you're starting to see is how, how yes how different each of these markets are but also how similar they are and that's why these shows sell that's why these audiences are so dedicated to that artist because you have these pockets of uh, of of very similar uh, lifestyles and culture in these different areas. So I think that's what I started to notice is how to develop a, a, an act. What's something that you came back from London with? Like I went over there and I was like, yo, honeycomb, <laughs> which is like huge, I guess, in London as like a snack. Mm -hmm. That's that's something I uh, I got in London. <laughs> Shouts to them. As anticlimactic as this sounds, but it's really Nando's. Like they sell the peri peri sauce in the states, and I buy the shit out of it. <laughs> it is it's really good. <laughs> I feel like Nando's is okay. Like Nando's the is sauce, our Chick Fil A. Though, the sauce, the chicken, and the 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 like fries and stuff. Whatever, fine. It yeah. serves its purpose, but it's the sauces. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the peri peri sauce. I, I fuck it's with. Really we good. also we also did it sort of wrong in that we went in there and we sat down. And waited for someone to come by with like a menu or something like that oh, when you're supposed you're to go new. up to the counter. <laughs> yeah, they knew. No, but like we were we were with people who are from London. Yeah, and like they were like they oh, did us dirty. You want to know what? Them away. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah basically, <laughs> they were like, oh, whoops. <laughs> so, what did you learn about yourself in that time? You think? I think what I learned about myself is that in that moment when you have no one to tell you what to do, it is your job to tell you yourself what to do. <laughs> um, so that's when I learned it. Is like. I don't have to wait around for someone to tell me what I'm doing is right or wrong and nor do I need any type of positive reinforcement. Like what I'm doing completely affects not only my life but somebody else's. So I think that was like really important to understand and kind of doing what I do now is that I didn't have time to wait around for someone to tell me what to do. Neither did this person, this, uh, this artist. So that was, I think that was like the, the moment of reckoning. Like, okay, I have to be in... I have to be in charge of myself. <laughs> when Gold Link starts to really bubble and then like become a big thing, could you see it happening? Oh my gosh, yes. What was the first thing that really tipped you off? It was just like audience reaction to to his live show. They wouldn't know what he looked like. They wouldn't know what the You music didn't know what he looked like. Yeah. I didn't know what he looked like. <laughs> um, but he's such a rock star. Like live, he's incredible. So you start to see people like develop this like this relationship with him and they didn't even know who he was so and that was that was the f obviously seeing shows sell out like that's huge and you can see that okay this is this is like a thing um but that's when i started to, to notice that there was like a cult 
following there. And then, then yes, like the Grammy nomination helps take it to a different echelon. I like guess, the you know, there's that, bit. you know. But, but that's, I wouldn't say that like people that know crew, that's not his fan. That's people that know crew. Like people yeah. that know like deep cut, that know Planet Paradise, like that, like I'm still a fan. What was the most important thing in that time for you to elevate him as an artist? Like what did you really want to blow out? I think that's something that we're still like working through is what more can we do? Um, and that's with any any artist, right? Like what more can we do to add, to add and expand on the ideas that we already have? So whether it's building his, his profile outside of music, like what does this look like outside of music itself? Like how do we think about it in a video format? How do we think about it in terms of like how we work this at radio? Like all of that is like creative strategy and, and how you're developing and building something. So it's not necessarily there's one thing or another, but how do you work with all of these different pieces and have it blow up at the same time. And there really is a way to do it organically yeah. with with the core audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It all it all starts with that that core audience. Like you give anything to the Bayhive and they'll blow the shit out of that. <laughs> like it's just it starts with that cuz then like it's it really is the trickle down effect. Does Goldlink do Goldlink fans have a like a, a group name? <laughs> you know what they don't. And you, and I feel like that's a that's very much like a pop thing, mm -hmm. like a pop up for women mm -hmm. um the only reason why like i think future has future hive is because it's because of you and raven yeah exactly and, yeah. no no yes, no it wasn't yes. me no 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 it wasn't us. <laughs> it, it wasn't actually us it was um uh super eight it was him he started he said it on twitter first that was like yo like future is like the beyonce for guys mm -hmm. and it started to become a thing future but you guys future were hive. the ones who bought so, the domain name so kate kate bought the donate domain oh kate name. did and initially, like from the jump, Kate she, Nitz. yeah, we yeah. we like talk, like I texted her and was like, "Yo, like we were talking about Future Hive," and Kate bought it instantly. And I was like, "We should do something with it." So we just made it into like like something for Ramadan, basically with like future lyrics that popped up. I I don't even know if it's still up. Um, and then Raven uh, shoots this future show or something and says, "Hey, like my friends and I started FutureHive.com," and that's that's literally how. Every like that was it, that was it. That's that's what happened. That's organic. Yeah. yeah, that's dope. I need to find out what his name is, but it's it's literally like Super Eight on on Twitter or was. So when does your friendship with Raven turn into something where you're advising her and then ultimately managing her career? Um, <laughs> it was really funny, and I don't know if she said this before, but Raven, Raven had this like management email. And like we're friends first, right? And mm -hmm. so I was never, I would help her out. Like I'd give her advice, like whatever she needed. She'd be like, hey, do you think I'm charging enough for this? Or what do you think I should do for this? And she would just ask me for advice. And I would never like, I'm like, I'll help you. Just, just let me help you. Um, and so she started like answering emails as somebody else, as like her manager mm -hmm. from this management email. But then she'd like fuck up the tenses and start saying <laughs> I like midway through. <laughs> and I was like, you cannot send this. <laughs> like, why are you doing this? Like, I was like, let me answer it just so that like you don't ruin, the, ruin this yeah. for yourself. So, um, and even now sometimes like, I would say that with like Raven, with Amrit, who I also look after like, Yes, I manage them, but I look at it as a partnership. Like, as you you grow as a manager, like that job title really changes, and you're growing a business. Um, like people forget that managers are technically the employee of an artist, and so at some point that relationship changes where you guys are building this business together. So, and that's how I look at it too. Like, I, it's funny when Raven like calls me her manager because I'm like, well, we're friends, but. Um, but you know, we're, we're growing a business together. So, I mean, does that come with like hard conversations to have with them? Like in terms of like, Hey, you can't take this opportunity right now because that will affect another opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like, I, I go with my gut on most things and so far it's been working out. <laughs> you mean uh, as opposed to like data or like what? Uh, yeah, what yeah. Yeah. That too. Like obviously everything with data, like you I use that a lot every day to decide to make some big decisions. Um, but it's also just kind of like figuring out what's happening in the marketplace and deciding like it that at some point it becomes just like microeconomics. Like what is the opportunity cost for all of this and and how do you value it against yourself? So um, so sometimes 
I'll give my honest opinion and be like, I think you, you should do this, but it's up to you. Or I don't think you should do this. I really strongly advise that you don't do it, but it's up to you. Yeah. You know? We were invited to something for a walkthrough. And we didn't know what to charge. So we were like, oh, Ramya would know. <laughs> and so we passed it along to you and you were like asking for double. So like, <laughs> um, I we're didn't like good starting point. Yeah. 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 And, and like, you know, I was ready to take like a fraction of whatever it was. And it did work out. Cause you're making a very nervous face. Like it didn't work out. <laughs> um, yeah. Didn't work I know. Out. I was yeah. like, was that good advice? Oh, it was, yeah, it <laughs> was great, great advice. Yeah. 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 Um, but my question was, I guess, like what thinking goes into like basically just being like, well, like they offered you this, but just say double it. Uh, there's no such thing as a rate, first of all. Wow, I love... <laughs> I know. I love how Ramya would just be like, you want to yeah. know, there's no such thing as this thing Fuck that rates. everybody agrees that there is. <laughs> Fuck lines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there. it's true, though. There's no rate um, that you can, you can give yourself. Like, sure, yes, sometimes I have to give a rate, but I'm just like, okay, this is what it... Like, to do this, this is what it is yeah. for today. Yeah. Um, but there's no, and I think it's so silly when people are like, oh, I'm this much an hour. Cool, if that nets out to that, great. Uh, but I don't think there's so much more that goes into a rate than just the time you're present. And so you have to, again, think of the opportunity cost, the actual opportunity, the amount of work you're doing, um, if you even want to do it. So I think, yeah, always aim for as much as possible, obviously because brands have it and they have the money and they have like, they have a certain ROI they have to hit. So if you're able to deliver that, there's no reason why you shouldn't get paid what you're worth. What has Tommy Genesis brought to your life? <laughs> um, so much joy. Actually, it's been cool because she's the first like recording artist that I would say I kind of like, I went after and I wanted and I wanted to work with um, and basically i flew to paris to basically be like hey i want to manage you and that's how it happened we spent 10 days in paris did you think that uh you would return without her as your client uh there was definitely like it was definitely a conversation i was i was like whether whether this works out or not like i'm still here as a, as a support system and ultimately again a manager and building a business with someone there's so much trust that you have to have even for myself like i have to trust my clients to know that they're not gonna fuck me over or they're not gonna go around me to, to ultimately that will also fuck them over, but um, to, to go around me to do something or they won't like, cut, like I, there's so many things that happen in that way and ma manager turnover rates are really high um, and that's just because artists are fickle, people are fickle. So it takes a lot of trust and time and development to build something like that. So, so yeah, I think, oh, as far as what she's brought to my life though is like honestly some genuine experience that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Like there's so many things I didn't know about touring until I started working on her tour and, and, and building her tour. And I'd never done a tour before by myself. Sure, I'd been a part of it. Or I'd never done an album roll up by myself. Yeah. So yeah, she, she brought me valuable experience that I wouldn't have gotten anywhere else. And so she, we, we did this one, it was really sick. I know exactly how to like blow it up next time. So but how gratifying was it to see her on certain stages and, and to see people, you know, spend hard earned money to really support this? You know, when you like have a party and you think no one's coming. <laughs> yes. That's every, every party I've ever thrown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you get there and you're like, it's empty. Let's leave. And it's like the party starts at nine. You're there at 8.55 and no one's there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel that way all the time. But, uh, but it's cool you see the rooms fill up you see all these people that are so excited and like we were in europe and that that's like her strongest fan base is in europe and she was signing shirts she would she would sign anything they gave her <laughs> and um she was like signing shirts and, and shit and people were waiting for her for hours and standing in line waiting for her for like it was daylight to like night you know um and i thought that was so sweet and the rooms are small like this is these the, again like this is the this is when you're building that audience and you're building that fan base. So these are the kids that wanted to be there no matter what. And I thought that was so special. Um, but one kid was like, oh, what's your sign? She's like, I'm a Leo. And he like ran outside the venue. I was like, she's a Leo. <laughs> and I was like, this That's one awesome. is That's, hilarious. Yeah, not, yeah. Um, That's great. But I was like, this is so sick. Yeah. Like they, they care what she eats, breathes. For any artist, like yeah. they care what they eat, breathe, think about, oh, like 
especially if they're active on social media, it's like, oh, you know, like to photo, he's away. Like, <laughs> and you, you just find that relationship. And I think I had that early on with like Destiny's Child. I was like, like writing fan mail to Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because you get it in the, in like, um, what'd you say? And like, you know, like Y7 magazine. Do you remember that? Mm -mm. Or like, uh, no, I mean, I wasn't a subscriber. I, I think I <laughs> knew know, it exists. Yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. It was like a teen magazine and they would have the addresses of like where you could send fan mail to NSYNC, Beyonce. And I would send fan mail to like Janet Jackson to, to all these people. I have no idea if they ever got them. Oh, but did you, you send gifts too? Like it's like, Oh, oh yeah. I tried to send <laughs> gifts. I tried to send gifts in like a paper envelope. Like I tried to send like a bracelet that I made in like a paper envelope and it came back like ripped. Like, uh. <laughs> um, they were like, you have to send this in like a proper envelope. <laughs> yeah. At least you weren't sending like powder. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Like here's my hair. Right. <laughs> you very lovely hair. <laughs> Thank you. At one point, apparently, you dyed your hair, <laughs> bleached it. Oh, you guys have went really far back on Instagram, I see. <laughs> no, I just searched Romeo Valori on, on Google. Oh, man. Okay. And you did an article for uh, The Cut. Ah, uh, yes. Or you did an interview with them. Yes. And so, yeah, so you, you bleached your hair. Uh, I tried to. Mm -hmm. I tried to. So I thought YouTube... <laughs> Everything on YouTube is right, right? Yeah. Everything on the internet is true. Mm -hmm. So I searched on YouTube and I like bought boxed bleach and I went into my friend's tub in high, in college and I tried to bleach my hair. Wait, my, was it the drinking tub? Uh, <laughs> it was the drinking tub, same, the same tub. Um, and I bleached my hair and I looked like Mufasa. <laughs> it was not blonde. Yeah. It was this rust. Oh. And That's not what you were going that for. Was it looked so bad. Like, I fried my hair. And I kept trying to fix it and dye it. And, like, it was just, Oh, immediately? Yeah. I I thought that I could do it. If you... Okay. I, I, I've never dyed my hair. I'm not good at science, remember? Well, this so, is chemistry. So, if you, if you double down, <laughs> yeah, is that better? I think so. Do you so. go really I'm, blonde? <laughs> I think it's always better to double down. Sure. In this scenario, nope, <laughs> nope, I'm not a chemist. So I had to go get it fixed. And like, she was like, there's only so much I can lift at this point. Like, I just have to like, just fix what you have. This is a professional you're talking yes. about? Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was uh -huh. like, you have fried your hair. Like, it might fall out. And I was like, mm, oh. that's what everyone wants to hear. Yeah. Um, so it ended up Was this up around any this... holidays that you had to see your parents or anything? <laughs> it was definitely, what time around the... I'm trying to remember exactly when it was, but it it, it, it was in the summer, I, I do believe. Mm. So it was like, as I'm kind of graduating even, is like what's <laughs> happening. And my parents are like, what the fuck did you do to your hair? Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, so it ended up being this like ashy brown blonde. And it was, sometimes it was okay. okay sometimes yeah. like it was a look. Wait, would it be cool now? Now that like everybody like does like weird colors? Um, It would be a look. Okay. It, it would yeah. be a look. A strong look. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And I look like Mufasa. <laughs> so dope. Yeah. But, and pictures do exist. Oh, yes. No. <laughs> there are photos. So if I, if I really went back on your Instagram, yeah, I there. could find them. They're there. <laughs> awesome. I, I, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. 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 There's like one picture that it, it is straight up orange. <laughs> but, um, and How I was like, why that? did I have friends? Yeah. Like, where were my friends? <laughs> How long did that last for? Uh, I want to say maybe like six months of what? because I kind of grew it out and it was this like ombre situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I finally just like dyed it black and I have not touched my hair since. <laughs> yeah. Smart move. Yeah. I have, I don't even brush it now. Like that is. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. We have a bunch of friends who you work with and we know there's been like a lot of positive movement around all of you. What is it? It's it's EQT. It is. What is EQT? EQT is the brainchild of all of us. It's it's something where we all have like there's a there there is there are several of us and we all have very very similar and different strengths. It sounds like and, a militia. <laughs> <laughs> We're right, socialist. Yeah, I, thought, yeah, yeah. I thought we covered this. <laughs> um, and so it really is though. Like we all are very equal in what we do, and we have so many different facets to the company so yes it is part label it is part management company but we also like we're so involved in the production of 
the music of what we do and um, the, from the videos to, to the brands that we work with. And um, so, yeah, it is a militia. What is your strength? What do you feel like right now, all these years into your career, all these years into your time here in New York that you're really good at? Um, I'm really good at, oh, this is hard. I know, but you know what? Even you saying that makes me really happy because it is nice to to hear someone say like, I'm really good at this. Like yeah. I, I know and I believe and I accept that I'm really good at this. I think it's healthy. I think it's <laughs> like dope for people to, to take that and own that. Okay. I don't know if this is like, and don't say tap dancing. <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, yeah. You know, if you are really good at tap dancing, really you shouldn't good. shy away from that. So I think I'm really good at reading people, and that in in and that helps for multiple things, right? It helps really build trust with someone. It also helps when I'm like, oh, I trust my gut on this. Like, you should do this or you shouldn't do this or whatever. Like, um, when it comes to talking to brands or just bigger ideas, I'm like, I think I'm really good at kind of reading the room, reading people, and I think that because of that a lot of people feel comfortable with me. So I can really mediate in any situation. I don't get mad usually. I don't get like, I don't have a an emotional side um, in that way. So, um, so it's easy for me to kind of come into a situation and completely neutralize it. So uh, I think that's like a really big strength of mine is being able to like properly read a situation, read people and like react on it instantly. And I'm sure you found out all about your EQT people because you guys had a retreat. We had a retreat. <laughs> we had a retreat where we had to put our phones away for like eight hours a day. All um, of you? Get, well, eight hours is is dramatic, but okay. yeah, it was it was long. It was a while. Like we literally had to put it down for about for about four or five hours. Wow! Um, like you're on a flight or something. Yeah, and um, the flight of life. Yeah, yeah. and um, that's like Mufasa. Yeah, <laughs> and the Lion King. <laughs> we need <yama> <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so we had this retreat where we. This was the first time all of us had been in a room. There was at a point where I was working with some of these people that we're working with for like a year before I had ever met them. Like I had met Jeremy for like six months. Shout out to Jeremy Corellis. Uh, yeah. And um, you just and knew him online. Yeah. Or like, and uh, this is going to sound terrible, but I thought he was someone else when I was texting him. <laughs> like I didn't realize you that, that he like, was golden. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, I, I like texted him something crazy. And he was like, I don't think you meant to send this. Thing. And I was like, I, because I thought you were a totally different person. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so it was helpful to like get in the room with everyone and be like, okay, this is what everybody's doing. This is how we're all going to work together. And like, so you figured out like the workflow yeah, and all that yeah. stuff. Did you guys do like trust exercises as well? Like trust um, falls? By trust, if you mean shots and lots of drinking, <laughs> then, then yes. yes. <laughs> Did you reveal something during this? Um, we revealed like little. How good a singer you are? We, yeah. we yes. all realized yeah. that we had all collectively we were all tried to be like recording artists in our own right and we failed that's why we're managers <laughs> like, <laughs> literally all of us <laughs> i tried to i tried to play the drums when i was younger I'm wow terrible at the drums that so it, it didn't work out no did you own did you out. own drums uh no but i had lessons i'd go to and guitar i learned guitar and i tried to learn the drums but your parents were good. like yeah not in in the home yeah not you, in the home you go yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely could, but you could tap dance in the home no, you can't even tap dance in the home. You need tap shoes. <laughs> you, oh, so you, floor. Did you do like the the flying like this? You know what I'm that's talking about. That's just for the movies. That's just <laughs> uh, that's just for the movies. Well, before we go, can you say something really nice about our our great friend Nur Ozdemir? Oh, Nur, yes. Uh, I adore Nur. Not only does she have amazing skin that we all know and would kill for, <laughs> um, I would say she is unbelievably generous like she's generous with her time she's generous with anything like if you need i don't know anything she will she will give it to you no questions asked so i think that's that's like one of my favorite people yeah yeah, yeah. like you know lavender for everybody that's right rose oil yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. we've moved on to <laughs> rose oil when you look back at the little girl who grew up in a tiny corner of of kentucky are you still that little girl i don't know if i was ever a little girl um, I've always um, been totally fine being completely independent. I think I would drive myself to school. I would make my own lunches. I would just, I was living And that my was own when schedule. you were just 10 years old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me and the Honda, <laughs> parallel parking yeah. um, on the playground. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't think I've ever been a child. 
Wow. I, so something that I've always done. Like, I've always had this personality trait. I'm like, this isn't new, mom and dad. <laughs> uh, so. Ramya, um, congratulations on everything. Uh, thank you. And You, you know, guys have seen a lot. Actually, yeah. you guys have seen probably the most of anyone. You know, to to not only move to New York from, you know, that tiny town of yours, but to survive here and to really win here is phenomenal. And I'm just glad you came up here. We've been we've been fixing to have you up here for a long time. So. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. I, saw the sli- I saw you slip that in there. Wow. <laughs> you're like, you think you're going to forget? <laughs> I saw that in there. <laughs> in there. <laughs> Thanks so much, Ramya. Uh, thank you both. Thanks, everyone, for listening to this new episode of Waste Time with It's The Real Jeff. If you want to find out more about us, I'm Eric, the one with curly hair. You are Jeff, the one with glasses. Together, we are It's The Real, no apostrophe, no spaces. Jeff, if people want to find out more about this podcast, it's called A Waste of Time with It's The Real. We also have another podcast called Two Jews and Two Black Dudes. Review the movies. That's with us and all three members of The Locks. Don't ask for the origin story. We've said it before, and you just... You just missed it. You missed it. If people want to find out more about what we have going on, Jeff, where can they go? You can always go to itstherreal.com. Itstherreal.com slash shop for all your shopping needs. Itstherreal.com slash dot com <laughs> for all of your itstherreal.com needs. Yeah. You can sign up for the newsletter on there. Oh, you know what, Jeff? We haven't been talking about the newsletter lately, but it still exists. It still exists. I'm There's a new one it. on the way right now. Yes, yeah, so send it out. So, so get ready for that. That's right. Sign up at itstherreal.com now and expect that newsletter very soon. Also, I saw a New York Times article about how newsletters are like the new wave. Really? And I was... You kicked it off? I was two weeks early on that. Man. So. Shout out to you, Jeff. Shout out to me. The It's The Real newsletter, all the newsletter... That's fit to print. Ooh. So, Jeff, we're also on socials in case anyone oh, yeah. missed us. Oh, wait. Uh, I have to do my bit. My <laughs> bit is that you can find our podcast anywhere you look. <laughs> yeah. Great. Plain read. Where, and what about what about, what about yeah, on socials? You can go to iTunes, search for A Waste Time with the Real, or just hit the real. Maybe both will come up. Yeah. You can always go to uh, Spotify, go to Apple, yeah, whatever. But, but socials. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, we're on uh, we're on Instagram at It's The Real, Facebook at It's The Real, uh, Twitter at It's The Real. We are also on Twitter at It's The Real. We are not. That is not us. F- it's The Real. <laughs> with two Zs and three Ls. <laughs> Jeff now is one of our favorite parts of the podcast, where we get to shout people out. People get very excited about this. And what I did was I went on Twitter, Mm -hmm. on our socials. Oh, dope. And I said, hey, if you retweet this tweet that I tweeted, tweet, tweet, (laughs) where I said every day we see people looking for podcast recommendations, here are ours. A waste time with it's real and uh, two Jews and two black dudes review the movies. Then we will shout you out right now, right here, forever on the podcast. And Jeff, who followed the directions? Okay. We've got John Sparks. Shout out to John Sparks. New Jersey's own. Yeah, God's country. What God is living in New Jersey? John Sparks. Jeff. There you go. Yes. Uh, uh, Taking music fans. Shout out Randy. to Randy. Uh, shout out to Young Lion Vlog. Shout out to Young Lion Vlog, who actually just interviewed us and put his interview up today. YoungLionVlog.com. Great questions. Every single one of them. He said he wasn't going to ask any of the normal questions, and he did not. Shout out to him. Super impressive. Um, shout out to Rager Meister. Yeah. Order the Hut. Big um, shouts to Ray. Uh, pray for the world. Lime underscore link. Now, that one I don't feel like is a real account, but... You want to know what? Keep going. Yep. Uh, 80s Baby. Dario. Uh, Raw Live and Unedited, which apparently is a podcasting network and not what you think it is, <laughs> which is Cucumbers. I just think it's great content. Fits the Real. Shout out to Fits the Real. That's with a Z. Yep. Um, F-A-B-D. Uh, all caps. Yes. Um, I want to shout out Doper Don. Shout out to Doper Don. A.K.A. Smokey with a Q. Uh, I want to shout out Shoot Your Mark. All right. Mark Brayboy. Shout uh, out to Mark. Also, Fits the Real with an S. Shout out. Uh, everybody's chiming in. Uh, both of them. Yes. Wow, we really completed the circuit. That's right. Uh, DJ No Tag underscore the number one vibe setter. <laughs> you know what? I, I dare somebody to challenge him for that title. I'll do it. All right. Guap Dad 4000. Shout out to our guy Guap. Also, I am Seafoot Isaac Slings. All right. Shout out to him. Slay Jeremy Slay. 
That is Young Viola. Shout out to her. Uh, Mr. Ruffin. Shout out That's to That's David. David Ruffin. Ruffin. The lead singer from The Temptation. That's right. Say. Yes. Uh, Goom. Shout out to Goom. We were emailing with Goom the other day. Uh, Lawrence R underscore, the stand-up comedian. All right. Shout out to him. From The Underground. Uh, I, may, I May Die Lit. I'm a Die Lit. Okay. Kanye Stan. All right. Shout out to him. Uh, Extra Washed. A great name that's Samuel out in the Bay Area. Shout out to everybody out there. And of course, a DB Doobie. A DB Doobie. <laughs> which sounds like an Adam Sandler name. Is it Adam Sandler? It's Adam Sandler. Shout oh. out to Adam Sandler. Yeah. We're back next week. Maybe we'll have a guest, maybe we won't. Who knows? Who knows? Three episodes until 250. Jeff, as always, not for real, for real. Sure, sure. We'll see you guys next week. Right. <laughs>